Welcome to this Gretzel tutorial on time series. In this video, we will talk about how do we model time series in Gretzel and also how do we perform in-sample and out-of-sample forecasts. Specifically, what we will do first in this video is to load a time series dataset in Gretel. We will then create a time trend and also periodic dummies as additional variables. Then we run a linear regression model using both the time trend and the periodic dummies. We will do an in-sample forecast, and since we have the real observations, we can assess the quality of the forecast. And finally, we will perform an out-of-sample forecast. The data we will be using in this video are monthly beer sales from January 1995 to June 2007. This is monthly data, so we have 150 observations in our data, and the beer sales tend to have a growing trend over time, and they also have seasonal behavior. When we do our in-sample forecast, we will do that for the last year in our data from July 06 to June 07. And then we will forecast future sales over one year from July 2007 to June 2008. Let's get started. I have already opened Gretel and I have already also opened the file beersales.csv in Excel. When we examine the structure of the data, you note that all what we have here is a list of numbers. These numbers are the beer sales for every month in the dataset, which runs from January 1995 to June 2007. We have 150 rows for the 150 months. I'm going to now close this and open the dataset in Gretel. We follow the usual procedure of opening a file. In this case, it is a CSV file, and we open it. And recall this prompt, which we have usually ignored, which asks us if Gretel should give a time series or panel interpretation to the dataset. In this case, we're going to be clicking Yes. Gretel asks us for the structure of the dataset, which in this case is a time series data. And it now asks us for the frequency of the data. Our data could be annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly. And in this case, we're talking about a monthly dataset. And the following question Gretel asks us is, when does our data start? Because Gretel has no idea of knowing this. We inform Gretel that our data starts running from January 1995. And this is going to be the notation to represent January of a given year. If we click forward, Gretel has already recognized we have 150 observations, and thus the last observation must be June 2007. We can click on Apply. Recall that the file had no variable name for our column of numbers. Thus, Gretel had to guess a name for this variable and chose to give it V1. But we can give it a more meaningful name, such as beer sales. A usual first step when exploring time series is going to be to observe how this series behaves over time. For this, we can come to View, Graph for Selected Variables, time series plot. The only variable we will be plotting is beer sales, so we click OK. And note that the beer sales have an upwards trend over time, they grow over time, and they are also subject to a very strong seasonality, as noted by the spikes that go up and down. I'm going to close this. In order to regress beer sales against time, we first need a time variable. Gretel can automatically create a time trend variable if we come to add time trend. And note that our data has a new time trend variable. We also need dummies for the different months, which is also a standard procedure and Gretel can do it automatically. For this, we can come to add periodic dummies. And note that Gretel automatically created one dummy for each month of the year and the different dummies are going to be turned on whenever their corresponding month is at hand, and it's going to be zero for all the other 11 months. So we have all the information we need to run our linear regression model. Our dependent variable is going to be the beer sales. Our main regressor of interest is going to be time. And in order to account for the seasonality, we need to exclude one of the dummy variables. I'm going to exclude the dummy variable for January. 
and we click OK. So at this point, we have ran a model with all our data, the 150 observations from January 1995 to June 2007. Note that not only the time trend is statistically significant, but also all the dummy indicators. Overall, we are being able to explain a fair share of the variance in sales, and we have an adjusted R-squared of 87%. Time-series data models generally have high adjusted R-squares. Let's now try to run our in-sample forecast. What we're going to do is tell Gretel to run a model, but only using a subset of our data. In particular, we want to remove from our sample the last year of the data. For this, we come to Sample, Set Range, and we will tell Gretel to exclude the last year of the data. So rather than running until June 2007, we're going to tell it to run until June 2006. We click OK. Gretel informs us that even though the full range of the data runs from 1995 to 2007, the sample we have selected only runs until 2006. Let's rerun our model with this constrained sample. The number of observations has fallen from 150 to 138, which is okay. That is exactly what we wanted to do. Now let's see how well does our model perform in forecasting the sales of the next year from July 2006 up to June 2007. We're going to come to Analysis, Forecasts. Note that Gretel automatically notes that there are values that were left out of the sample and we're going to be running the forecast for them. We are not interested in examining the forecast of the observations already in the sample, so we're going to set the value of pre-forecast observations to zero. I'm going to click OK. Gretzel is now showing us several metrics. It is showing me the actual beer sales, the prediction, the standard error of my prediction, and the 95% confidence interval of my forecast. These are metrics we already know. We are more interested in how to assess the quality of this particular forecast. And there are several metrics for this. For instance, if we take the difference between beer sales and prediction, that is beer sales minus prediction, that is going to be our error for each of the 12 observations, and we computed the mean, we would attain the mean error. If we take that error, we square it, and then we take the mean, we attain the mean squared error. And if we take that metric and take its square root, we attain the root mean squared error. This is one of the most common metrics used to evaluate the quality of a forecast. Now, it is hard to assess how big is this number relative to our observations. And thus, it is useful to think on percentage-wise how far off are our estimates. And say, if our estimate is equivalent to 110% of the real observation, then we have a plus 10% deviation. But differently, if our forecast is an equivalent of 92% of the real observation value, then we have a deviation of minus 8%. If we take the percentage changes and take the mean value, we have the mean percentage error. And we can also take the absolute value of it, which will always be positive, and compute its mean value, which in this case is an 11%. So overall, our 12 forecasts are on average about 11.3% away from the actual observations, which is not that bad, but in other situations this might be very bad, for example in the context of clinical trials. I'm going to close this window. This graph is showing us several things. The red line represents the real actual sales from July 2006 up to June 2007. Our forecast is the blue line, and note that it generally follows the trend, which is determined by the seasonal factors. We also have green bars that represent the 95% confidence interval. However, it is not that visually appealing to examine the confidence interval as this. So I'm going to rerun my forecast. If 
following the exact same procedure. But this time, rather than showing the confidence interval as error bars, I'm going to ask it to show it as a shaded area. This is the same output we had before. I will ignore it. And note that now the confidence interval is that green shaded area. And it is much easier to see that the real beer sales, the red line, are generally within the 95% confidence of our forecast. So overall, we have a very good forecast. Now let's do a different exercise. Let's assume now that we want to look into the future and forecast the sales from July 2007 up to June 2008. I'm going to close this, close the regression output, and I'm going to reset the sample to the full range. We will rerun our linear regression model. And before running the forecast, we must add observations to the data. I'm going to come to Data, Add Observations. Since we have chosen we want to forecast data for an entire new year, I'm going to add 12 months to the data. And now in our model, we can come to Analysis, Forecasts, and Gretzel automatically detects we want to run a forecast for the unobserved values of the new year that run from July 07 to June 08. I'm going to not ask Gretel to give me the forecasts of the pre-forecast period observations and I'm going to click OK. In this case, note that we have our prediction but we cannot compute any errors. Evidently, since we don't have real values to compute any errors. I'm going to close this window and in this case, what we are observing are the expected sales for the upcoming year for which we don't have data. This is how a firm could use prior historical data to forecast observations into the future. Thank you very much.